Hi everybody, welcome back to the painting channel. Today we're going to be talking about watercolour washes, what to do, what not to do. So let's roll that intro and let's see what happens. <laughs> Everybody, welcome back. As I said at the start, I want to talk to you all about watercolour washes today. It's a massive subject and every watercolourist out there has to deal with a wash at some point or other when they're creating lovely pieces of art. So I wanted to talk to you about what I do and some tips that may help you with the washes that you have to create and also one or two things that will give you a problem if you don't look out for them one or two pitfalls to avoid so without further ado I'm going to turn the camera down and we're going to see what we can get up to okay before we go on into creating any washes at all let's just talk about brushes the brushes that I use are from a company called Rosemary and Company I've known Rosemary for many many years and we go back a long way and I've been using her brushes both in oil, acrylic and in watercolour all that time. Now the series that I use today are called the Red Dot series. They are the closest thing that you can get synthetically to good uh, sable brushes. They do hold their shape, they hold water very well and I can't thoroughly recommend them enough. But uh, well, there's no buts actually at all. Uh, the What I was going to say was that when it comes to washes, it's no good trying to do a wash with a small brush. Not at all. Even this one, no good at all. You need something a little more substantial. Now, you can buy big brushes like this, which, okay, if you're doing a large sheet of watercolour paper, you're going to need something like this to cover the ground very, very well. But something like this or even this for a smaller piece of paper would be more than ample to do the job. Now these are a series, as I said, they're red dot. These are a 14 and a 10 round. This one is a filbert and it's a one inch filbert. It's a stunning brush and it can deliver a lot of color and a lot of water to your paper very, very quickly. But for this job today, we do not need to go this big. So I'm going to put those to one side. What I will say in recommending these, if you go on to Rosemary & Co's uh, website and if you decide you want to buy some brushes, even, it doesn't matter if it's not watercolour, it can be any brush, oils or otherwise. Uh, if you go to the checkout and the checkout summary, if you put my name in, Port Apps in capitals without a break, then you in the affiliate link section, you will be helping me out immensely and that would be very, very kind of you. And it also means to say that I earn a little bit of money back from promoting these brushes. But I gotta say, I would not promote them unless I believed in them. That you can um, bank on. Anyway, enough of all that, but these are the brushes we're gonna be using today. The thing that you must really consider is having sufficient color mixed up. So it's no good having it too wishy-washy or too thick you need enough of it too to do the job in hand i'm going to mix into that may as well use some of that up now this is very very thin let me just show you how thin on this piece of paper very very thin when that dries that's going to become almost indistinguishable you're going to see it but it's not a very very strong color so you need to mix enough color you need to mix enough color and you need to mix it at the right density in relation to water. So not like weak tea, maybe, but maybe a little bit more like a good cup of milk might be. Not dripping, not runny to that degree, but it does give you a little bit more substance to your colour. But is there enough here? Invariably, I've got to say, we seldom ever mix enough colour for what we have in hand for it to do. So I'm just going to do this now. I've got this lovely blue mixed up for a sky. And I'm just going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the pad this way up. That way you have a much better idea of this wash. And when I do put a wash in, let's go to a bigger brush. 
just to make sure that we are really giving ourselves a good chance really really mix up enough color to do this job with okay so there's the paint and I'm going to start the the wash now you can go in and that's quite dry so I'm going to mix a little bit more water to it but what happens is you need to have it on a slant you need to have this so that there's a nice angle to your paper never do it on the flat it will not work because what's going to happen is you're going to create a bead of water the weight of water in this paint will start to descend and you'll notice it really here but here is starting to lighten up you could run in another piece of color there just to give it some strength and run it down but always always keep this bead working all the time this does not dry up on you you will have a chance of creating a lovely wash I'm just doing one stroke at a time as you can see and that bead is coming down I'm refilling the brush so that I'm not going too weak with my color and you can see me just working it down and creating this wash now if you were just doing a plain blue sky in this case this is all you'd want to do let it come all the way down and there's your wash finished all right i'm going to leave that there i'm going to come in with a second go at that i'm going to mix some more color i'm going to change it to a slightly sky blue with a little bit of phthalo sign in there it really doesn't matter for this object we're just playing around with this at the moment and i'm just going to move that up a little bit and we're going to come in with another wash now you can see here that i've just added a few more bits of color just a few more going across here just to lay that up a little bit more and let that one stroke at a time let that now i'm just going to stop now and i'm going to go halfway that's all i'm going to do there's a reason for this i just want to show you what happens when that starts to dry because by doing this now we've got a lovely wash coming down like that once that starts to dry up on me i will have problems with it just clean the brushes i'm going to leave that a little while and we'll come back into that one very very shortly let's put it out of the way okay so we've allowed this to go off just a little bit just giving it a few minutes just to start to dry out certainly on the hard edges this area though is a little bit moist because there's a little bit more bead to go on with i'm mixing some more water together with my color now i wanted to continue this so what i wanted to do is feather it out too if i apply it like this you see i may well lift off because it's still damp but what's happened is that i have put too much water into my mixture it's a little bit late now i've done it i can put some more color in here but i've done the damage and the reason is that the amount of water in here and in here is much less than the water that i've just applied i've put on too weak a mix of pigment in here like that i'm just exaggerating it now and what's happening is that that water is leaching forward leaching this way and it's pushing all that pigment and now i'm going to end up with a big big cauliflower and that's something that i really didn't want to happen now to give you an idea this this is a very similar thing here you can see where both of these i did a little example and i left the uh, I, I sort of took it down so far and then put some more water just to finish it off and that is what happened it leached back and once it's dried you've got these awful cauliflower marks now sometimes we want these cauliflowers but in this instance we really don't want them so that is the problem once this has dried up a little bit more let's just come in with some more pigment <coughs> just mix up a little bit more of that blue a little bit more water now i'm going to come in and i'm going to go over this area that's quite dry and what's happened is that i have introduced more water but if i leave that i'm going to get this hard edge 
I allowed the bead to start to dry and I've got this awkward edge. Once that dries off, I've got a problem. And if I do the same thing as I've just done here by adding some more water, I'm going to end up with even more of a problem because that water is going to want to push back and create me yet more issues with regards to cauliflowers. So the whole thing about uh, keeping this all going is to work it all in one go. You see if I put a nice light area over, I've got the same thing as I have here. So I'm going to get rid of that and we're going to look at something else now. So we've done a, we've done a wash down. That's not a problem at all. What I want to do is talk about having a wash which you can work around subjects. Now, if we come back to our blue. So, OK, let's go back in and let's put in a lovely sky. Let's just turn it this way. Let's put in a nice sky and, and make out that we're going for a lovely landscape painting. So I'm going to come in. As I did the first time, I'm going to put a nice wash in, but I do need a bigger brush. That brush will not do the job on its own. Work fast and work constantly. One thing I won't do when I am doing a wash like this is I will not answer the door, will not talk to people, and will not answer the phone. I am very antisocial, but I just want my wash to work, and any interruption to that will cause me to have an issue that I may or may not be able to get out of. I'm just going to take a little bit of time now just to take that away, let that water flow down and I'm coming around what could be a couple of clouds like this. Not too much water, just make sure that if you do take some water, take most of it out of your brush. You don't want too much getting into there. But what you do want to do is allow this to soften as it comes down and to have that bead work out for you. And that is what I'm doing there. Just a little bit more water. Let that come away and down. Okay, we have a nice, going to take that little bit out there. But we have a very nice set of clouds that we can work with. I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to come back in. Now I'm going to do the same sort of thing again with another sky like this and we create a lovely wash same idea same thing a little bit more pigment maybe just at the top but while it's wet I can do that let it run all the way down beautiful wash like so and that is a lovely grade of wash coming down. And then instead of trying to work around shapes for clouds, I could quite happily just come back in and lift some of this pigment back out and create lovely little clouds in this way. Very, very nice. Now try and move this around. Don't keep dabbing that into the same color because you're just going to put blue paint back down where you've just tried to lift it off. But you can have some very, very soft edges like this. Wonderful clouds across a sea, a seascape. And you can vary the mark, the pressure, create all sorts of lovely effects in this fashion. And there's a whole load of beautiful clouds. And we have this lovely gradiated wash that goes at the top, through and below. And that is a very nice way of creating some clouds. But nothing wrong with this way either. What I would tend to do, though, is some of these are very, very hard edges. What I would do is I would take a brush, a smaller brush, and I would just take most of the paint, uh, the water out of the brush. And I would just simply tease the edges before this totally dries up. Just tease the edges. Maybe a little more water. It's not going. You don't, you've got to find that balance because the moment you put too much water in, so it's going to push forward and try and create a horrible cauliflower. So you've got to watch that. But just then, just tap it off. You want to arrest some of the movement. And just come down here and carry on just teasing the edges. So you get that lovely, subtle. In fact, that cauliflower there that I created is going to work out for me quite nicely because I'm going to use that now to 
create a sense of that cloud going through there. I'm going to tease that off there. Again, I should have cleaned my brush. My fault. But I'm just going to tease that out there. And I'm going to tap that away with a piece of towel. And you soften the effect. Okay, just going to carry that idea on through here. I'm going to leave this one. Just want to touch around and give some lovely cloud effects. I don't want to go too mad. I just want to soften that hard edge and gives that cloud a beautiful glow as well, which is really nice. Now here you can bring some of that blue back in. You've got a lot of blue on your brush. Bring it back in this way. Just tap it back. Create a stain. But there you see we're going to end up with a little bit of a problem if I'm not careful. I'm just going to try and arrest some of that movement. That was pushing forward. You can see that dark just pushes forward. It's the problem when it comes to any watercolor of getting the water ratio to pigment correct. Not only when you're first mixing, but also when you apply a second or third go at the same time. If you're working wet in wet, which we're pretty much doing here, too much water to the pigment on the second go will cause so many problems. You should always have less water every time you come over. If you're doing this layer, sorry, I'm sort of jumping around a bit. But if you are doing this first off and then you're coming in with a second layer, then you should have less water with that pigment. In other words, almost if you're going to keep laying, you're almost going to go into dry brush at the end because the the more you more water you put in, the more problems you're going to create. Um, and I can do that quite easily. I can just come in here and I did it just now. If I put some, this is quite damp. If I put this lovely bit of water in here onto that part there, just to create a little bit more, you can see in a minute that that will just be awful. Just soften that off there. That's going to cause me a problem. However, if I come up here and I come in with less water, a bit of blue, it's going to make, I'm using a different blue to make it obvious, but there's less water in this mix. In theory, I should be able to get away with adding more because there's less water to push forward still might cause a problem but you get the idea it's not as a problem or as much a problem as that it is working a little better there none of it is ever the best way forward but you see hopefully the issues that i'm running into okay we'll come back to that in a minute okay so let's move on and for this next section i'm just going to make a multiple color wash so I'm going to start off, that's a little dry, put a bit more water to that. So we've got our nice big wash at the top, nice big brush to put it on with. And as we come down, I'm going to add in some lovely um, violet in the, in the form of magenta. Let that come down and we can add to that now. We can make that even more magenta -y coming down. And then we can bring it into maybe some reds coming down. There's a little bit of an issue, but that will come down. Take it all the way through. And then we can bring in some lovely, just mix off, got a little bit dirty, but you get the idea. We can bring that yellow in, more red at the top there. Bring that down through. And as we get nearer the bottom, take a little bit of the moisture out of our brush and we could quite happily now take that off to a very, very pale colour. Not too much water, just enough. Make that come all the way down to just a very, very faint tint on the paper, just enough to stain the paper. But you get the idea, we've got this lovely transition of colour coming all the way down through. And this works very, very well. That If you were doing a landscape with a lot of figures or buildings and stuff, you can bring your wash through. And then as you come down to different areas of light, you can add another color component to it. 
try and bear in mind that you want the color and the water to be about the same ratio here just slightly got it off it's just a little bit not quite right you know that's why we got these two distinct lines here because i came in with a little bit too much red there to water and so it did make a difference that will cause and dry out and create a mark these should not nor should this but this area will so it is always good to get your colors pre-mixed before you start Hi everybody and welcome back to the watercolor painting channel. Now I would like to show you something, no, that's not the way we're doing it, that do not have to do a wash now and again at some point during their painting time. It's painting time, oh come on. Gonna be a lot of outtakes in this one. Start again. Hi everybody, welcome back to the painting channel. Today we're going to be talking about watercolour washes, how to do them and what to avoid. No, don't like that. How can I say this? Hi everybody and welcome back to the painting channel. Today I'm going to show you all about... Hi everybody and welcome back to the painting channel. Today I want to talk to you all about some washes, some washes, washes. Hi everybody, welcome back. As I said at the start, I want to talk to you all about watercolour washes. Now it's a huge subject and it's one that all watercolourists have to do. <clears throat> Great. <clears throat> Start again. Hi everybody, welcome back to the painting channel. Today I'm going to be talking about watercolour washes, how to do them and what to avoid and how to avoid problems. How? not to do them. Hi everybody, welcome back to the painting channel and today's, ep not today's episode, not an episode, no it is an episode. Hi everybody, welcome back to the painting channel in today's episode, I just said not to do that. So without further ado, I'm going to turn the cameras down, no I'm not going to turn the cameras down. <laughs> So it's one of the subjects that many of my students down at the gallery often come a cropper with and uh, a cropper? Really? That's very local. Sorry about that. Start again then. <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome back. As I said at the start, I want to talk to you all about watercolour washes today. Now it's sub... it's subject... it's... A subject it's a big subject watercolor washes is a big subject for so many of us so many problems and we all have to tackle 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 we all have to tackle mm. Everybody, welcome back. As I said at the start, I want to talk to you all about watercolor washes today. Now the subject is a big one, and it's really it is. I know it's big. Yeah, I'm talking to myself now. Of course, I'm talking to myself. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. As I said at oh dear. <laughs> 